back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things that we found going on in Linux, open source, and all that fun, fun, fantastic stuff. I'm Vince Stone. That is Joe Bryant and one Pedro Mateus. Hello. With our powers combined, we're, we're just going to talk about the stuff that we found interesting going on in all this. What's going on, Pedro? You yes. didn't put anything down. I heard there was a new royal baby. You're excited about that. <laughs> Uh, well, I couldn't escape it, but I really didn't care. It's a tourist attraction. I'm not here as a tourist. I'm here basically working for the UK government. So, <laughs> well, everyone in the office was going on about it. No, no, no. This week, I actually got a chance to update the uh, Shield tablet to Lineage OS 15.1, and it runs good. It Ooh. runs really good. <laughs> it's really nice. nice to see this, uh... Little thing. It's the exploding one, supposedly. Yeah, Blam. you see the little blob of ink. That's how yeah. I mark them. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't keep works. it in the dryer. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the battery isn't even swollen yet. It's like, yet. okay, so the batteries have issues. Oh, hmm. It's four years old. <laughs> man, oh man. Jelly Bean, happy birthday, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, today's my official birthday. I'm another year older. Oh, God. When, when, you, when, you, when you get close to 50, you don't care for that too much anymore. <laughs> so, but I, I am excited. So, and uh, last Sunday, Steve Husband took me and a friend to a fair so I can go on some of my favorite extreme spinning flat rides and a roller coaster. And that was a lot of fun and had a great time. And I did notice I was one of the oldest people on these rides. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a thing. But I love being spinning, sp spun around. <laughs> it's one of my favorite uh, things. <laughs> Man, there's even a song about it. Uh... Yes. <laughs> right round, yes. baby. Right round. Right, right round, <laughs> like a record player. <laughs> I've been doing a whole lot. Uh, what was it? Monday, I went on the UPS ride, which is the line ride. When you ship something to Canada, you would mm -hmm. think... Shipping things from, you know, the America to the Canada, which is next door, which I could drive to Toronto in a day, um, maybe day-ish. Uh, even when I got there, like, where are you going to send this to? Canada is like, oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah, I know, man. Don't worry <laughs> about it. So we have to go through and make sure, you know, it didn't contain anything that Canadians were afraid of. And which it didn't, and we packed everything up. And it's cleared customs. Good on that. That's always good. It's going to be an adventure. Jordan's going to have new audio things to play with. And for that reason, I'm going to be doing a guide for podcasting and getting all this nonsense mm, set up awesome. that we use for Jack and Audor. So you can basically, at no cost, have access to a digital mixer. That'll be hopefully useful nice. to people in the future. So, the yeah. big news. This week, yes. um, starting with Red Hat. <laughs> yeah, so last week, Red Hat got a new logo. And yesterday at the Red Hat Summit in Boston, they announced that Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 is now generally available. And it comes with a whole lot of, of updates and innovations. And I, I first found out about it because um, uh, Jim Whitehurst, president and CEO of Red Hat, tweeted Linux is where Red Hat started, and it's hard to believe we're announcing RHEL 8. We're bringing RHEL to every enterprise, every workload, and every cloud. Welcome to the future. <laughs> and that definitely sums it, uh, Red Hat moving from not just Linux, but to the cloud infra infrastructure. And one of the updates is uh, Cockpit, which is a web-based interface for a system admin to perform admin tasks is now available by default in, in the RHEL repositories. And it is also now compatible with mobile browsers. Uh, that was actually uh, quite a big deal because a lot of sysadmins use that to administer Red Hat. And Nginx 1.14 is available now in the core repository. And RHEL now supports four petabytes of physical memory. Amazing. <laughs> So this is a uh, GUIX 1.0.0 is released with an improved user interface and hassle-free installation. GNU GUIX is not only a standard package manager, but also a distro. But the package manager not only supports standard features, 
but transactional upgrades and rollbacks, unprivileged package management, and per-user profiles. And for developers, GUIX environment allows you to spawn one-off system environments. I like the example from the GUIX website. Um, quotes, suppose you're a GIMP developer running GUIX environment. GIMP spawns a shell with everything you need to hack on GIMP, much quicker than manually installing its most its many dependencies. So it's a really sophisticated package manager and has a distro, which Pedro is going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, they, they built a distro around their package manager. <laughs> yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I guess if you want to show off just how good uh, of a package manager you have set up and the way that they have set it up, it's basically it's like you want to play around and sandbox a particular uh, dev package and just fiddle with it without risk of uh, messing with anything else on your system. Kuix is a very good way to do it. And if you build that into a distro, it also makes uh, very good sense uh, to let people see how an operating system built entirely from that would work. Mm -hmm. I can see it, the point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Listen, yeah, man, definitely. I mean, you're not being totally facetious in any way. I mean, mm -hmm. it absolutely can be used as a standalone operating system. <laughs> Just 100%. I mean, it works on x86, ARM, ARC, 64 machines, <laughs> which is totally a thing. Uh, but, okay, I didn't know a lot about GUIX until a few days ago. I was like, wait. I've heard the name. I've never, I was like, ah, oh, why haven't I heard of this? Because it does do, I mean, it's transactional. So mm -hmm. like anytime you install it, you, it, it's got built in time machine, man. I mean, you can roll back yeah. from any previous generation. That's also helpful. Like if you're deploying to a bunch of machines. Yep. Pedro, how come the world doesn't use this as a standard? Uh, yeah. For the exact same reason that the world doesn't run on Docker or Snaps or flat packs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Snap flat to the future pack. Because, <laughs> you know, Image. native performance and having everything running directly off of the or as close to the kernel as possible does have its performance advantages. Mm -hmm. So... GUIX is very fun. It's really neat, especially if you're into tinkering with software. Just, uh, you know, temper your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been threatening to buy one of these for a minute, and there's a little more information on it. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So we have an update to the Pinebook Pro. The developers and engineers of the Pinebook Pro have been hard at work, and a recent prototype is being tested and it looks like it will be ready to ship in a few months and lots of us linux users have been waiting for this one a nicely specced 199 dollars laptop that competes with similarly priced chromebooks and what's really cool is the pinebook pro supports hardware accelerated 4k video and 3d graphics with the molly t860 mp4 graphics gpu and has a four gigabyte of ram and more storage than the original pinebook which is wonderful <laughs> yes yes it is especially when you add in like oh a pcie by 4 m.2 connector that means it can mm -hmm. do nvme uh a uh, metal body it's a magnesium alloy body U uh, usb mm -hmm. type c port i i wanted one of the old uh pine books even like the 11.6 inch one i've been on that waiting list for who knows how long <laughs> uh and i want this one now i i just like that's a proper ARM laptop. I want to play yes. with it. I want to <laughs> yes. throw things at it. I want to <laughs> see what works and what doesn't. I, I, it's a toy. Give me. I want to yes. play with it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty neat, man. I, I'm down with that. Uh, again, something to play for. Uh, what do we have up oh. next? Key pass? Key mm -hmm. pass 242, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, well, it, it's the new version. They have a pretty reasonable mm -hmm. change log from 241 to 242 uh they have a couple of uh, new uh entries to the menu they have support for auto type um system-wide hotkeys for auto typing passwords so you can set basically whatever keyboard shortcut you want and it'll uh input the password into the field there's 
a significant uh, a lot of uh, improvements and bug fixes uh the info will be in the show notes as usual and if you want to have a dedicated password manager running in your pc that's not you know built into chrome uh or firefox because firefox is that now <laughs> uh this is the one that i'd recommend uh i used it for a long long time basically until i turned my android flip phone into a glorified security key because i want to log <laughs> into something i flip the flip phone go into the uh google authenticator <laughs> and there it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here, Pedro. And but this yeah. is the password manager I've always liked best, and recommend people and uh, my students actually to use. And yeah, like like Pedro does, since two factor authorization was invented, I use my one plus one as my password security manager. Yep. But Key <laughs> KeyPass really, of all the the password managers out there, it it had has so many features they're easy to use and it just works it works on everything really well all you know all the platforms <laughs> yeah. right on right yeah. on uh mm -hmm. i don't know if i ever really mess around with password managers mm -hmm. I really, well okay does google count yes yeah. <laughs> that is a <laughs> yes, password manager a cloud enabled yes. one but it is a password manager <laughs> yes that, that built into chrome <laughs> i mean i've already sold everything over to Gooks. I'm mean, saying so about the privacy yeah. bits, but that saves me a couple of times. So I understand mm -hmm. the advantages of this. And, you know, if you want to do your own business with that, right on. But partition managers, they're still a thing. Why are they still a thing? Mm -hmm. Because we mm -hmm. still have local storage, because uh, despite, you know, Google's best attempts, we don't live in a cloud world just yet. So if you want to manage your partitions and you happen to be running the K desktop environment, Plasma mm -hmm. 5 as it is known nowadays, uh, you may have run into the KDE Partition Manager. And uh, version 4.0 is now out after one, uh, one and a half years in development. Uh, you can get the new uh, KPM core library, which serves both because uh, KPM in itself comes in two parts, uh, like most of the stuff in KDE. Uh, the core library, which uh, can also act as a shared library for other software, not necessarily from the KDE framework. You can, it's open source. You can integrate it into anything. And the little GUI, which exposes the core functionality. It's all center stuff right up until uh, mm -hmm. the point that they mentioned that the GUI, as it currently stands, can't do everything that the library allows, allows you to do. Like uh, Lux2 um, integration. Can't do that from the GUI. You can write other GUIs mm -hmm. to pull on that functionality from the core library. But the default one? No. Can't do it. And I, I was reading this, it's like, what is wrong with you people? It's like, after 12 <laughs> versions of Plasma 5, <laughs> yeah. how is it still missing like two thirds of the functionality that the base framework can do? It's been there yeah. since KDE 4, and they still don't let people access it. Why? But I'm getting off track here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead, Finn. Well, I, 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 I'm confused why people need a GUI for partition management because I'm old. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh, Gparted was the old one, and everyone yes. has come to accept uh, Gparted as G, it is. And G, one of hey, do you do you know what Gparted does? It, it, it's a GUI for Parted. Yes, it, it works. Yes. Works. Yes, anyway. <laughs> this one works too. <laughs> to yes. be fair, it just doesn't expose all of the functionality that it can do. And actually, one of the things that they changed is uh, they are no longer based on the lib Parted uh, and are instead using SF Disk, which you know they basically do the same thing. Um, there's a uh, Brazil one of the Brazilian contributors, Caio João uh, Carvalho, uh, ported the smart code away from, as per their own admission, unmaintained lib ADA smart to uh, uh. the smart mon tools. So uh, yeah, th there's that and smart lies to you, kids. Mm. Just yeah. smart always lies to you. Smart's an estimation, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> did, did, con, consider it as a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Pedro, can we agree on that? Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if you pull up, okay, seriously, I mean, if you pull up smart data and everything says pre fill, you're like, now nah, we're good. Slap that back in the drive. Let's mm -hmm. go. 
Yeah. Yeah. You don't worry <laughs> no, it, it lies to you. It's it, oh no, the drive is fine. The drive is mm. not fine. I can hear it not being fine. No, no it's fine. Shut also, up, smart. Listen, man, <laughs> with your auditory hallucinations, how can you tell the difference? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can tell exactly when the hard drive is going to fail. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been a long, long time, man. Shuttleworth uh, is surprised oh, yes. that people are using Kumbuntu, not in the cloud, but in their chairs. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yes. So so last week we talked about Mark Shuttleworth's keynote regarding dueling foundations at the Open Infrastructure Summit. But something else very important was revealed. Uh, there has been an increase in support contracts for Ubuntu Desktop for AI development and engineering. And actually, this doesn't surprise me a bit. I've been noticing a huge increase of usage of Ubuntu on the desktop from NVIDIA's CES keynotes about their AI compute modules and autonomous vehicles to Disney's animation presentations at ZGraph and the AI that they use in their animation programs. And TensorFlow, it's a thing. It is heavily used on the Ubuntu desktops and stored on Docker and Kubernetes images on Ubuntu servers. So I was actually surprised that Shuttleworth is surprised, but I, I guess because he's got so many more contracts <laughs> now. But they're definitely focused towards <laughs> cloud, canonical, but yeah. at the end of the day, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I mean, this makes sense because <laughs> Ubuntu is a perfectly serviceable desktop. I and mean, if I was going to deploy a thousand seats, I'd be rolling out canonical. I'm like, but and it's like, because it's also a usable desktop with LTS support. It's yeah. not going to change on you overnight. And you know, you mix that with the LTS and just the ease of setup, you probably could have a very uh serviceable mm -hmm. revenue stream outside of, you know, you just doing support on desktop, which I don't know if they want to get yeah. in that business. Because in the article, you know, Shuttleworth's even like, ah, it's something we'd kind of do under the table if, you know, somebody approaches us mm -hmm. like, hey, we need some help with yeah. this. Mm -hmm. But I, I could see them going into, you know, desktop services, for businesses. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Red Hat, that's one of the things that they offer. Uh, if you yes. want, if you have a Red Hat uh, workstation deployment going on, they will offer you the desktop support. So it makes perfect sense to have Canonical compete like that as well. And it's, uh, yeah, no, uh, as Ven was saying, uh, he said, it's like, yeah, we used to offer that service under the table, but then you start talking about AI and machine learning, mm -hmm. those kinds of developers running on Ubuntu, then you need to support them. So why not make it official? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand it 100% because, you know, I'm like, oh, you just talked about Red Hat. Why not put RHEL? It's like, that's overkill plus people like using 4X kernels. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the LTS for, you know, sale as it may grow over the years. It's like, eh, you can always have a newer kernel installed. And, you know, there's also uh, Susie's definitely an option. But mm -hmm. then again, I mean, it also will come down to familiarity. I mean, a lot of yeah. people know how to know yep. how to know them three which I don't. I'm like, that's confusing. Get it yeah. away from me. But <laughs> that's just and, me. Yeah, and Ubuntu support structure is freely avail available on like Red Hats. So um, online for, you know, all the info you need mm -hmm. on getting your desktop perfected and running everything running right just right. Canonical did a good excellent. job with that, making sure everything's yeah. out there for people looking into it. And so good on yeah. them. Um, exciting times. That's not the only bit of a Ubuntu news we have. <laughs> yes. uh, we have some sad news as well. Wah, wah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like two days ago, I learned that uh, Canonical had a place to buy merch. Uh, and apparently they don't anymore. I, I missed. Nope. Uh, yeah. It's uh, been down and the Ubuntu shop is no more, which I'm like, oh man, that kind of sucks. This is uh, from OMG Ubuntu. Basically, <laughs> You know, they're like, is it a sign of decline? And people, it doesn't seem like it's going to be one of their focuses right now. Uh, I think uh, Pope even rolled out yeah. and he's like, yo, man, uh, mm -hmm. we might be doing something in the future. The cycling bib. Yeah, you might want to edit yeah. the pictures for uh, those people All out right, there at home fine. watching the video version. <laughs> yeah. Look at it. <laughs> look. Do you know how glorious I would look in that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, oh, no, and, and that USB vase speaker, I actually wanted, and I missed getting it. <laughs> uh, oh, the and one I thing the I putty. wanted out of it, 
Uh, the one thing I wanted out of it was the like that uh, sort of looked like the Apple Mouse, but it had the yeah. Ubuntu branding on it. It's like I was really yes. curious about it, and then I think it was Empty who got empty. one of those, yeah, and uh, posted about it on Google Plus. It's like it's crap. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah, well, I got the puttiest swag at at, at scale, so I've had that for mm-hmm. a while. And and but I've bought uh, their, the the t shirts off their website, their official Ubuntu shop or or canonical store. Uh, there's two different names for it, <laughs> as Joey was pointing out in the article. <laughs> But yeah, Alan Pope uh, says they are working on a new partnership for official Ubuntu merchandise, which I assume will be probably a third-party merch shop like we use Teespring here at Linux Gamecast, which makes sense for Canonical and will save them money. So that's a good thing. (laughs) Makes sense, yeah. You give them a cut and they have all the shipping and everything else. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Canonical, give me a flamethrower. Yeah. (laughs) Call me. I got ideas. Uh, Camoid, what's that? Was oh, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah, was a little something that I ran into uh, over the past week while I was looking for an app image for GVC View because Clear Linux doesn't have uh, GVC View. Uh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was basically just like, okay, what is a camoid and how do I um, go around playing with it? And I found that they uh, put out a, an announcement that version 1. Uh, 8.6.1 is now available. And you can get it as an app image. Uh, and it works. I can tell you for a fact that it works. But the thing that it does, it's not just the GUVC view functionality. Uh, it gives you, uh, it can do virtual video syncs. It can do far more like effects than a GUVC view will let you do. It's got a bunch of extra controls and it can do like uh, screen capture for specific things and apply effects on the fly to those screen captures uh, at a very, um, well, they do call it the ultimate webcam suite. So that I think they nailed it. It, it does work. Yeah. <laughs> Serious question. Yeah. <laughs> when you were looking for this, did you just forget that you had OBS? I didn't forget. Get I had OBS. <laughs> it's just like I wanted something like GVC View specifically for the yeah. uh, the controls, and this is the first thing that Google suggested when I googled for GVC View app image. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, right on. Yeah. <laughs> so That's it's like, oh, for. this is actually a thing, and it works. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about it? Yeah. Oh, it's it's wonderful. Actually, I hadn't ran into it a few years ago, but until Pedro put it in the show notes, I hadn't heard of it in a while. So I, I didn't know it was continuing to be developed. And it's really got a beautiful user interface. I was really impressed by it. <laughs> well, yeah. I use OBS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I only say that this looks like a fantastically... Um, Interesting product. I only say that because I no longer have a webcam. I just have video <laughs> encoders. And you see if you yeah. look at encoders and goes, yeah, good luck with that. I'm out. Yeah. Just yeah. No, uh, you can <laughs> yeah. change. You can ch- actually pick different encoders for the different video, uh, uh, virtual streams that you can create with this one. Mm. If you want to run your webcam out of uh, H.265, you can. As nice. long as you have the hardware to do it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Good to know. Beautiful. Um, Hey, don't you love working with audio on Linux? It's great. I love it. So <laughs> yes. Why don't you tell us about it, Ben? <laughs> it's an everyday new experience. Um, but Victor is working on something else, man. He's uh, working on a new mm-hmm. network transport for Pulse Audio and Ulsa. So I'm like, this could be handy if you're afraid of Jack. And you can rightfully be afraid of Jack. It, it can be quite a monster to deal with. But at the end of the day, um, it's going to be a low latency audio for Pulse that works with like GUI tools like Pavu Control or anything like that. And it does a couple of things, man. I mean, it's used as a jitter buffer, recovery buffer, and for rate estimation. So when you're thinking about like Wi-Fi and stuff like that, because that's one of the neat things here is that it can deal with loss recovery. Unlike like if you're trying to stream something over RTMP with like VLC or FFmpeg. So yeah, that's really neat. This can going to support lossless encoding because then you're like, oh, well, what about Opus? You can kind of do streaming with that. <laughs> but this will do lossless and encoding independent packet loss recovery on top of that. So I want to wish them the best of luck trying to tame mm-hmm. the RNG monster latency generator, a.k.a. Yeah. 
Pulse Audio with the best of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have a nice little graph here showing you like what you can deal with with latency, with adjustment, and without cause. One of the reasons I try to avoid Pulse Audio, just getting the AV sync from here Mm -hmm. into here is genuinely different on every reboot with Pulse Audio. (laughs) Yeah. The the only way to get around this is to Hmm. route it through Jack, because Jack's going to give you continuous latency. And one of our audio mess ups before the show was I'm trying to dial that latency into a certain number that's really low with a low block size. And it didn't like it. And I realized that's because I had my governor set on power save. Uh, <laughs> That'll do it. 12 cores don't yeah. mean anything if they're running at two gigahertz. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really neat, though. Networked pulse yeah. audio. I mean, if they can get it to, they're going to be releasing everything uh, in a more simplified format later this month, I believe, but just being able to set that up around the house, Raspberry Pis, you got speakers and stuff like that Mm -hmm. without going, what's this Jack thing? What do you mean? What's an HPET clock? Like a normal person shouldn't have to know that. (laughs) Just shouldn't. So this is fun. This could be a good thing about a Raspberry Pi. Why? uh, Raspberry, not speakers. Mm, Throw a little speaker on it. Yep. Done. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Put them outside and not worry about it. So, uh, Really, really happy about that. Not as excited as I am about this next story, though. <laughs> oh, this one is still oh. ongoing if you go anywhere near Twitter. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But we're all happy, man. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, I got to get the right graphic up. Do I still have that? Do I still have it? Yeah, I do. There we go. <laughs> it's our Microsoft Ta-da. Loves Yay. segment. It's brilliant. Yes, it is. <laughs> So, Jill, why don't you take this first one? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So, we knew this was coming to support their Windows subsystem for Linux, Linux and integration with their Linux base, Azure Sphere OS, and the like. Um, it's, you know, of course, will improve performance because they're including the real Linux kernel as opposed to an emulated Linux kernel. <laughs> wait, wait, so. wait, 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 wait. Don't just gloss over that. The Linux kernel. <laughs> On Windows. Uh, yes, yes. And okay. this is... 419, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, don't forget yeah. about the sexy new terminal, man, with GPU. Oh, yeah, text they're, rendering they're doing it. Oh, yeah. Terminal. yeah. And emo- <laughs> e- emoticon, e- emote support, emoji support <laughs> on the terminal. Bash has been able to do that for a couple of years. Uh, Quit exactly. hating. Quit hating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But but yeah, the the big news here is is yes. So now we have a real Linux kernel in Windows, which I just I knew this would happen. I think eventually Linux kernel will be replacing the NT kernel, but but we have this now <laughs> for for the Windows subsystem well, def- for Linux. Hundred <laughs> percent see it replacing the NT kernel because uh, you know from your terminal that you're going to be using, which is going to be streaming the desktop to you from over the internet for the subscription yeah. that you're going to be paying. <laughs> At yes. the end of the day, when, you, when you're looking at what's going on here, you got to think about this. Uh, Microsoft and Google are both in a war <laughs> to defeat an enemy, and that enemy is AWS. That, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. quietly, Amazon has built up this. It, it's the yeah. big player, not Microsoft, not Google, yeah. Amazon. Yeah, so they went they, to Azure, AWS. all the things. <laughs> they got to yeah. get in the business. They got to fight for that. That's <laughs> the future. Everything lives in the cloud. You know, like Google, they are going to leverage even if they have to open source in order to pull off that goal. And Mm -hmm. that's exactly what they're doing. You know, making it easy to run Linux code on Windows. I mean, on the Mm -hmm. user end, man, if you're stuck, you got to deal with that business machine at work. This is also a good thing. This is a good thing for you. I mean, especially if you're um, doing software development, you got to deal with that. All right. So you get a little taste of the native stuff. It's not really native, but you know what I mean? It's better than what you got right now. So I don't see the negative for this. (laughs) Except for I'm sure no. we'll see the people online be like, yeah, I, got, I run Linux. And I'm like, oh, boy, here it oh, comes. Oh, no, here Did it you comes. download yeah. it from the Windows store, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I inst- Hey, man, somebody might actually be able to run seven Linux. <laughs> yeah, they can run all seven Linuxes. <laughs> but that's okay. not the only bit of Microsoft news we have. No, it yes. is not. So uh, in our eternal quest to... Uh, talk about vs code until the heat death of the universe there's a little bit more and this one is uh 
Well, it's a bit different, because this isn't uh, about VS Code specifically. This is about an extension that you can apply to VS Code. And it is a... Uh, they call it the Remote Development Extension Pack. And basically what this lets you do is uh, it lets you connect to, like, they call it containers, but it's like repos you connect to a remote repo somewhere on whatever operating system and the editor will behave as though you're on that specific operating system from wherever you happen to be connecting so this again is also something that will make you feel at home let's say you connect to a your stuck at work with windows hi um <laughs> and you want to connect to a remote uh repo that's running linux and all of a sudden oh this is linux i can deal with this and you know what libraries to call and you know what dependencies you're going to need and you have all of that done for you this is nice this <laughs> is good this is functionality this is Yes, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jordan pointed out in the uh, in the comments, it's like uh, remote WSL. Get a Linux power development experience from comfort of Windows by opening any folder in the Windows subsystem for Linux, <laughs> implying that Linux is uncomfortable. Uh, well, I may be uh, Windows is comfortable. I've never said anything like, oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I may be misreading, but outside of yes, that that implication is very much there. It's like, no, Windows is better, but if you must, you can use Linux. Um this actually seems like a good thing, as long as you like VS Code. Because, mm. you know, <laughs> it's VS Code. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, I don't have anything yeah. to say to that other than okay, fine, if it makes you happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but something that makes us happy, all the people. Bringing you oh, Linux yes. Weekly Daily Wednesdays, Yay, Linux Gamecast, plus we two you. more streams on top with three more streams on top of that nonsense and uh, the beautiful yeah. party patrons. 121 glorious, glorious people. Kicking us 291 English old man per Saturday <laughs> night. Getting access to our Discord, getting access to our uncut episodes, and, you know, a couple other little bits and bobs. Go check it out. If that is your thing, if you like supporting people who support Linux, if not us, go find somebody else, man. That's the best way to do it. We try to put content out that you enjoy, and uh, occasionally we do something maybe a little informative. So, like I said, we're going to be getting that outdoor guide later this week. But we got two people who have increased their pledge on Patreon. They did. <laughs> yes, terrifying. they did. I got to give one big <laughs> plug got... <laughs> to uh, Matthew Comandone, Lutris.net. Yes. Go check it out. It's the best product ever. I don't know. Make, 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 cut, cut me another check. <laughs> I might say that for real. It's <laughs> really good if you really want to play a game, but you don't want to go through the hassle. Yeah. Hey, he was yeah. talking about yeah. getting some, like, what, what is that, DX9 VK? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, correct. Yes, mm -hmm. DX9. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> dx9 vk it's something along those lines you'll yeah. know it if you run into it like oh that's I know what, what they you were mean, messing up right <laughs> Who else we yeah we have david who's a new patreon thank you david very much <laughs> Thank you all very, Yay. very much. It's uh, your yeah. fiscal irresponsibility that made this very show possible. So it is. Yes. You yeah. <laughs> let us play around with a lot of cool technology and get that information back out there so it can be replicated Aww. if you want. I don't know. You guys are amazing, and we're honored. <laughs> this, this, It's amazing. <laughs> hang out with us. All right. Yeah. So let's buy. Mm -hmm. Slice of pie, teeny tiny little slice yeah. of pie this week, uh, yes, which is uh, so cute. Just one thumb. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, just one thumb because uh, that is mm -hmm. how you control it. And if you're wondering, <laughs> what the hell is that? Well, that <laughs> is a uh, game console thing of sorts uh, that's built with a Raspberry Pi and a teeny tiny CRT TV in one of those uh, lenses that you'd find on like the old camcorders, mm -hmm. so you can actually see what the heck that uh, teeny tiny CRT is showing. Uh, and um, yeah, you can play games on it with a single thumb. Okay, I'm going to request here. Uh, I'm going to need them to make the screen go monochrome uh, between uh, <laughs> black and red. And it's, um, we can call it the virtual monocle or the virtual gentleman nope. since it's just the one I <laughs> oh. <laughs> very good, Pedro. You're missing. You, you need to add about like ten kilos to it. 
Yeah. <laughs> then you can get the true virtual boy experience. This is kind yeah. of <laughs> Yeah. Do they do they have yeah. any place where you can track down that tiny CRT though? Yeah. Uh, they don't mention it in the uh written article itself. I didn't watch the, the video with noise, so maybe if they say it, I don't know. Yeah. Um to yeah, anybody so, of the this would have been a mm-hmm. wicked cool thing to have like in the mid eighties in grade school. Yes. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm doing this thing. And yeah, no, I'm totally recording this. <laughs> Which maybe not, because yeah. I think when did the Game Boy come out? That's been a minute. Oh, oh. Well, it is, it is... 1989, 1988. <laughs> yeah, in 89, yeah. Ish, yeah. Yeah. 88, <laughs> yeah. I was in high school. <laughs> Thumb cam. 89, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what's really neat is this uses the P- Pico 8 game engine made popular mm-hmm. by the Pocket Chip, which I have one of. Thank R. you R. to Patrick, <laughs> Mere PPC. <laughs> yeah. That, that's so it's going to be $7 a chip, you guys. $9. It was $9. I know it was $9 because I looked up the parts list and I was like, you can't make that for $9. <laughs> one time I didn't want to be right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, it was a really interesting project and uh those teeny tiny little consoles that they still give out mm-hmm. as swag as certain uh things. Yeah. Those are really fun to play with. I want Yeah, one. they are. <laughs> <sighs> so maybe you have something that's really fun to play with. Maybe we got something right. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to share your experiences in Linux. How awesome you mm-hmm. are cuz I'm sure you are. Um <laughs> tell us about it. Now Probably the best way to do that is not to randomly like DM one of us on Twitter. Like, hey, you never got around to that. Or <laughs> what I call it, whizzing in the wind, like just <laughs> on IRC or whatever, at mention or whatever. But the best way outside of just like leaving us a message on Patreon, because that we all get those notifications, is our contact page. But it's incredibly difficult to use. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, no. <laughs> look at it. I mean, how, how would you ever expect to make you sense have, of something that says <laughs> Pedro, your name? You have to be a literal wizard in order to figure this out. Your email, no. subject, <laughs> show, oh, you, you get to pick dream, which show I... you send your feedback. To. What is that? Well, is this some kind of sorcery? And then a, a place for a message for you to type things? No. You know, you know, you, okay, check this out. <laughs> You check this out. You you have to be able to click a send button, accurately click the send button. So we need certified <laughs> Windows uh, desktop experts. Oh yeah, uh, you need an MSCE uh, yeah. thing to yeah. be able to send us some feedback. Uh-huh. You, you need to be able to click very very well. All yes. right, up first, uh, Pedro, you go ahead and take it since you're the one that did. <laughs> okay, so uh, Cameron, Monster Cameron himself, uh, he's been quiet lately, but uh, every now and then he says something, <laughs> and this time, well, he's talking about Linux error handling, specifically about the uh, article that, um, can't remember his name now, from last week, having Jack a bit of a Wallen? hiccup during, Jack Wallen, yeah. yes, uh, having a bit of a hiccup when uh, updating Pop! OS. I have to push back. Linux isn't easy to manage at all. I'd say that I am a lot, wrong a lot, more familiar with Windows and recent distros have been a lot, wrong a lot, uh, uh, less error prone. I've historically had a lot, wrong a lot, more issues under Linux than Windows. Never had any for Mac, interestingly. Also, at some point, if you are an expert, uh, what the difference between solving errors under Windows versus Linux? The expertise point is... Moot. Uh, <laughs> one more point. Uh, the Ubuntu forums are pretty huge, but with Windows, you get an order of magnitude, more options, and forum posts for errors due to it being so homogenous. So I honestly don't know why you guys are cheering for the silly Pop! OS article. Cameron, <laughs> I'm going to need you to type a lot like you did in this message into Google and seeing what pops up. It's the oatmeal <laughs> link that you want to be reading. Uh, and honestly... I don't get the point of that article either. Uh, it, as I said yesterday, uh, not yesterday, but last week, it was mm-hmm. the, um, it would have been a far more interesting story if he hadn't had an issue during mm-hmm. that update. And uh, I guess to your point specifically, Cameron, if you know the point is moot, why did you use it as an argument? Because he knew he could get you to respond to him. He wanted to say <laughs> 
<laughs> instead of just saying like, "Hi, Pedro, Aww. how's it going?" He wrote wrote you he wrote you a story, man. It's like he knows how to push my buttons. Okay, and I appreciate him he for that. He stood outside the window with his boombox, running Windows C embedded, and he's like, "Hey, man, I don't know." I, I will boil this down. Um, I think it's a very common misconception is, and I have brought this up before, is taking what you know about Windows. I mean, jokingly saying, I mean, if you know, mm-hmm. as say an end user, or desktop user, you've edited the registry and I'm not picking on you. Um, yeah. And you, you get all that down. Mm-hmm. You can't take that knowledge base with, you know, you can be the best Windows users. You can talk down to other Windows users and say, you don't know what you're talking about. None of that's really going to apply when you walk over to an enterprise level operating system, nor should you expect it to. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. Just, you, know, <laughs> you got to get humbled. You do. Because if there's a lot of people like you need what you're essentially saying is I need this dumbed down for me. And that's never going to mm-hmm. happen. I mean, we, you can make it easier to use. You can make a more frictionless user experience, but eventually they're, they're going to nerf it to the point where you're not going to no one's going to be interested in it and that's mm-hmm. just not going to, i mean they have that it's called android yeah <laughs> uh, and, you know maybe there's an argument to be made right. there because it's the most popular <laughs> platform out it, there <laughs> it, I just, you can't roll into linux and expect your previous you, you couldn't walk from any other operating system to another operating system like mac yeah. os no yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah everybody has their own and when it comes to Searching for errors, you don't know pain until the mm-hmm. only Google result you get is a video you made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who the hell is it? Oh, okay. Like, oh, man. All right. Fine. I guess we have solution number two. It's kind of brilliant. <laughs> hey, number two. Uh, what do we have coming from Jim? Talks yeah. about editing on Linux, man. What does it say, Joe? Okay, so, hi, I'm still on the fence about switching to Linux from Windows on my main gaming PC workstation. Convince me. Also, MP4 video files work fine on my Windows version of DaVinci Resolve 16. Is this a complaint of the Linux version only? And uh, actually, yeah, yes, the, uh, to, to your last uh, comment, Jim, um, for the free version of DaVinci Resolve 16, uh, you just use Handbrake, FFmpeg, or VLC to convert your H.264 movies before importing them into Vin- DaVinci. That's that's what I tell my students to do. Now, Ubuntu Studio, uh, DaVinci Studio does support MP4 to a certain extent, only as the .mov container or the .mp4 container, but it doesn't support some of the audio connect codecs like AAC. Ah, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, Ven actually put in the show notes uh, the what you need to do to convert your MP4s to MOV with FFmpeg, and it's just, it's easy to do. <laughs> well, what you want to do, I mean, ultimately, you, you <laughs> probably might be better off just using KD and Live, because if your first thought is like, I'm going to be editing yeah. compressed video... That's, yes. That might not be how you want to dance. Um, mm-hmm. Natively, you know, there's an easy script I hacked together that will convert everything out to DNX HD. Is, that's what DaVinci likes. That's its thing. Mm-hmm. That's its jam. Yeah. And just convert your audio out to, you know, PCM16 LE, which is just base weight, flat. Um, no issues there. So if you give mm-hmm. them the 300 bucks, which I'll eventually get around to doing, it will do everything but if that's your big hold up i mean there's a bunch of very very good competent editors i mean it boils down to what are you trying to do i mean are you doing mm-hmm. i'm not saying this is a joke i'm are you doing the equivalent of chopping the ends off of a cat video and posting it to youtube katie and live that's your thing or open shot that's a thing uh what's mm-hmm. the other ones uh a uh, flow blade is one of my favorites yeah, yeah. shot I mean, cut right mm-hmm. that might and be I guess... uh go ahead no, to his first point. First comment, if yeah. <laughs> what you're doing is gaming for the most part on that PC, you're going to have a better experience. It, well, you're going to have more games available on Windows. You're dead to me, Pedro. <laughs> it, that's just the truth of it. Uh, yeah. By all means, switch to Linux if you want to. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't 
don't um clearly you're curious linux mm-hmm. you are linux is part <laughs> of your technical journey you're learning and growing as a human being I mean, it yeah. is there's no Definitely. The, you're asking the wrong question in the sense that somebody needs to convince you that's linux is or going into anything is just part of natural curiosity especially in the computer mm-hmm. science field like i need to know how this works this is neat i want to play with this and mm-hmm. that's where you end up it then you plant your flag and this is good enough you settle um stay on windows man you're happy there rock on but I mean, if you want to play around, you just want to play around with IoT and embedded devices and Raspberry Pis and all the other mm-hmm. fun, fun things that go along with the penguin powered stuff. Yes. Get ready to go on that journey because you need yeah. to convince you, not someone else. Yeah. yeah. And it's and like, like if you yeah. want to play with Linux, play with Linux. Don't, you know, make the commitment until you feel you're ready. Hmm? No. <laughs> There's no one chasing after you. It's like, switch now! <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if you're genuinely curious about it, again, yeah, just have some fun with it. Unless you just want to yeah. argue, you know, the whole tribal, my operating system's better than it. No one cares outside the internet. Yeah. I'm just saying. And yeah, Jim, I mean, you know, Linux is the Tinkerer's OS. And as Ven has pointed out before, unlearning Windows is usually the barrier. Not learning Linux, but unlearning Windows. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, this is a very and, true thing. You know, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent, because it's like, but you get used to Windows doing something, especially when Windows is doing something the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're like, well, you need to do the wrong way as well. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you need to rewire that bit of your brain that's used to that workflow. And it's like, oh, this actually makes sense. Yes, oh, wait a second. But <laughs> yeah. Self-reflection. How guilty. I'm so guilty of like one little thing getting changed in like a desktop or whatever. And I'm like, oh no, this burn it. That's why mm-hmm. we have XFC, LXD, KD, GNOME. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Enlightenment. Uh, <laughs> and then you have the myriad of uh, Change. just window managers. Change is hard. <laughs> Yes. Another thing I'll give you a quick mention, because I saw this question asked. I just didn't know if it was enough in the show. It's like, what's going to cure me of distro hopping? And I had a thought about that. You know, I gave it a think. And you, you'll stop distro hopping mm-hmm. when Linux becomes your operating system and not your hobby. Yeah. And when you that, need it to work reliably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of here, beautiful people. So we're going to roll some Yeah. Credits. See you next week. <laughs> chat realm oh and thank you Artharon for the red hat story that was awesome I'm so happy you put that article in there <laughs> actually thanks to uh, everyone yeah. who's been suggesting stories even if your yeah. story uh, doesn't end up on the show we yes. still appreciate them because yeah we may not see something that happens uh, during the week so yeah by all means let us know if you saw something that's even tangentially related to Linux and you thought it was interesting yeah yeah do you have show note access? Just plop it in there. <laughs> if you're death note or above, and you don't, yep. and you do, send me a message. I'll hook you up. Cool. Poke us on Thanks. Twitter. Uh, it's like, okay, look at this story. Ooh, that's neat. And by that, yes. poke Pedro. Aww. Yes, poke me on Twitter. At unaccounted for. Go there. <laughs> Aw. Thank you, Chat Realm. We love you. <laughs> Bye.